What's going on with everybody? It is your boy Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in the pink dungeon, giving it to you real raw rugged. And we are back in here with Earl Sweatshirt. Sick. Man, it's been a, uh, I feel like it's been a little minute since I've reviewed an Earl Project because it's been a little minute since he dropped one. I think, what, like 2019 is when he dropped Feet of Clay, I, I think. So almost going on like three years at this point. So hey, I'm always in for some new Earl. Um, I only listened to one of the singles beforehand, which is 2010, which is very high up on the track list. So I'll get to that fairly soon. And I don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer. Uh, this album is brought to you by a little bit of Pizza Hut. <laughs> I'm very tired. <laughs> but hey, man, let's get it to it. Old friend. Hey, Alchemist. I mean, Alchemist comes on. This isn't even, I don't think, the best Alchemist beat on here. Uh, but this beat is beautiful. He's just rapping over some uh, strings. Alchemist does it again. Uh, what do you say, Shrink? He says, Shrink, uh, Shrink. What do you say? I I'm sure not shit counting blessings like a measure. That was fire. Um, like I said, the strings he was rapping over was very beautiful. Just a nice, short, sweet intro. I'm back type of intro. And it goes right into 2010. And man, I love this song. There is one problem with this song that is bothering me now. I did not know this problem existed until recently because I listened to this album off of my phone for a lot of it. Then I put on some speakers because I have to put on I have to put albums on speakers when I review them just to get everything to, you know, be digested in or whatever. And man, this song is perfect. But the one thing that's keeping it from actually, I guess, being perfect, it's close to perfect, is the bass. The bass ain't hitting like it should be, man. It's a black noise beat. There's other black noise beats on here like freaking, what's the song with uh, Vision? That song? Literally, the bass hitting every time. It sounds too quiet on here. It ain't really, you feel me? It need to, it need to be. Like, that bass need to be hitting, but it's it's not doing it, man. You know how niggas on YouTube, they be having a song like Kodak Black, Skrilla, bass boosted. And it'll be like an ignorant song, like fucking, <laughs> what is an ignorant ass beat? Like, Paperwork Party by Babyface Ray. Nigga be Babyface Ray. Paperwork party, bass boosted. It's like, all right, bro. That this song already got the most disgusting freaking 808 toy it that it can already possibly have. Now that you boost it up, we did not need that. But a nigga need to bass boost this song because man, I wanted to hit harder. I mean, he's rapping hard. The beat is hard. The 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 energy. And niggas always say, oh, man, I can't listen to Earl anymore. You sound sleepy or whatnot. You can't say this about this. He sound like a nigga woke him up, boy. Like, goddamn nigga woke up out of nightmare, ran to the booth, started rapping, boy. That nigga said, oh, oh. Hey, you, you know you wake up, you go oh, in the nightmare. Nigga just ran to the booth and said, nigga, I got the energy. He just started going, man. What do you say? We need some fire. I say, uh, what do you say? We need some fire to rekindle. And then if I, and then, hey, keep five votes on me like the Olympics. That nigga was talking on this, bro. What'd he say? Uh, he say, uh, what'd he say? O three 3 mom was rocking. O three 3 mom was rocking Liz Claiborne. Had her stressing up the wall playing Mary J songs. Uh, bro, that nigga was talking on here, bro. This is definitely one of my favorite songs on here. Uh, nigga mama stressing to Mary J. I'm not gonna lie. I've heard my mom sing Mary J. Every time she sing a Mary J song, it sounds like she has <laughs> dug to the deepest trenches of trauma in her brain to sing any Mary J song, specifically the My Life, My Life, My Life, My Life in the Sunshine. When she flipped the Roy Ayer song, every time my mom seen that song, she'd be, and can you say what I see? Bro, she, I'd be like, what was she be singing from? She'd be having a guttural tone when she sing, bro. So you already know about, you know, that Mary J hitting, you know, them spots, man. That nigga say, threw me loose chains, look at what I made of it. Come on, bro. They did a poker scheme about folding and just going crazy, bro. That nigga was talking on here, bro. Five votes on me like the Olympics. What do you say? Uh, what do you say? John Rowe, I can hear my little entrance. Five votes on me like the Olympics. The way he, bro, the way he flowed on this, we need some fire to rekindle. Like, the way that he was dra dragging on those words then, man, I love this, bro. I love this song, man. Like I said, that poker scheme was fire. Threw me loose chains. Look at what I made of it. Crazy. I mean, come on, bro. That's one of them ones, man. What do you say? Uh, Crescent Moon, Wink, When I Blinked, it was gone. Ooh, dang. Just the... 
the 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 way that he can detail something is beautiful. Earl could write a book. I think Earl is definitely going to be an author in the future because his vivid songwriting is perfect for literature. Because I feel like a lot of literature that gets praised, when you read it, you can see it. Definitely fiction literature. Uh, so you read like a fiction novel and you're reading it, you can see it almost like a movie or documentary or whatever, but it's in word format. That's the same thing with his lines. You know what I'm saying? That crescent moon went when I blinked, it was gone. That's something I feel like you would read in a book. So, yeah, man, I can't wait to that transition in his life. Man, I've just, I don't know if this is Black Noise fault or Young Guru fault, the, 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 the engineer, I don't know who, but man, y'all niggas need to, you know, hey man, Kanye damn near, that nigga take a whole album down, then re-upload a whole nother album. I just need y'all to fix this and I'll be good, man. Just one little, you know what I'm saying, just that one little, not even one little part, the whole song, but just the bass and it just boost it up for me, man. That's all I need, but fire, fire, fire. And then we go to Sick. Shout out, man, to my nigga Sage, man. Navy Blue. Uh, he's credited as the ancestors on the production, but it's, it's Sage. And yeah, man, uh, I never heard Sage produce a beat like this. This is much more like, uh, I don't want to call it trap. I feel like that's what every white person calls any any beat with like some bass to it or whatever. Like, oh, I ain't rapping over some trap production. <laughs> like I, white people like it's fucking not white people it's just the niggas on the internet have seemed to well I, I guess it's a white person thing because I've never heard a nigga say this white people on the internet have seemed to they seem to have failed to, to understand that trap music is uh, music about trapping you know Travis Scott don't make trap music no, none of them little niggas made trap music out there. Travis, like I said, Travis Scott is a nigga they trap too. That's a nigga they selling the drugs too. He is not making trap music, bro. Right? You feel me? Migos, Gucci, that's that's trap music. Whole different conversation. But there can you can't rap over trap production and not be trap music. But that's not trap music. You just rapping over some trap uh, trap beats. Anyway, we didn't even classify that as this, but it's just a little bit more, I guess, trappy inspired. You know what I'm saying? But fire, man. Uh, can't go outside. Can't go outside no more because niggas sick. And I love the, the the keys that occasionally come after like however many measures of the song. The boom, doom, doom, ba -da -da -doom. So fire, man. Shout out to Sage for. Switching it up a little bit. I like this beat a lot. And um, yeah, this is a this is a, a vibe, as they call it, man. I put this song going literally every day, and I just kind of ride out to it. It's definitely, it just got some thump in it. So yeah, I rock with his heart. Um, then we go to Visions featuring Zay Loopers. Uh, this is another Black Noise beat, like I said, and the bass is hitting on this one. And that nigga, Zay Loopers, he, I was listening to this like, this is a very interesting verse because I could see a person hearing this verse and loving it, and I could hear I could hear somebody looking at this verse and absolutely hating it just because the way the way his voice kind of is and the way he you know what I'm saying. When it's still bringing you hell, simply, simply, and a bendy, like the way I can see somebody getting annoyed about that, but I can also see somebody loving it. I like this verse a lot because you know who this reminds me of. This reminds me of what ASAP Ferg was playing around with on Trap Lord. Go listen to Trap Lord. He did a lot of crazy voices, he, a lot of different voices. He was trying to straight up sing like on Cocaine Castle. Everybody come into this Cocaine Castle. Hoes and prostitutes in this Cocaine I can imagine Zay Looper's doing a Cocaine Castle remix. Yo, I don't know if Zay Looper's going to see this. Probably not. But. Nigga, if you can hop on a freaking Cocaine Castle remix and freestyle over that and do your own thing, that would be crazy. So I don't know if I'm the only person hearing that, but I hear like Trap Lord, ASAP Fur type of music on there. So, yes, I, I, I do love his verse. Uh, like I said, Wonder Still Bringing You Hell is a great line. That beat, man, Black Noise doing his thing. It's like kind of weird, like almost like um fluttering voice with the... It sounds like a fallen angel just like fall like free falling down to earth it's beautiful man and then you got a freaking earl come in on this bit man uh super duper hard bro everybody did a thing on here um and like i said man definitely freaking listen to that verse man it's very interesting man with the uh i want somebody to blast for me desert eagle i want somebody to fly for me like the way that nigga voice is crazy man uh but yeah man earl came in with the hat to get low like a jail pose that's fire just a good verse, or just a good song in general. Love it, love it, love it. And I could be saying this, but is it Tabula, Tabula Rasa? T Tabula Rasa, that's how I'm going to say it. Uh, so I first heard this, and I lie, I also did hear this single as well. And I was looking at the video when it came out, and I'm like, boy, this nigga Alchemist don't mess with these beats, don't it? But this nigga Alchemist is getting on the beat and just, he know he finna be fine. So I don't know how I found out, but I was like, oh, Alchemist ain't producers? Who produced this? 
My nigga, man, Theravada, man. That boy Theravada Cold, man. Interviewed Theravada last year, found him out through Sage. Man, that boy Theravada is a very talented human. If you do not know him, go check out Theravada, man. Uh, he got an album that came out last year. Super duper good. He raps, he produces. Super duper talented dude. And um, yeah, man, this is such a good beat. And then uh, freaking Elucid comes on first over the piano keys. And it's this almost sounds like slam poetry. And that's why I kind of like it. Just the way that he was flowing. It feels like he was just, it feels like abstract art the way he the way he flowed on it. I don't know how to explain it, but just the, the way he, he didn't seem like he was constrained to any type of measure or any type of time signature like he was just floating in space and going but it all kind of like worked at the end of the day it was beautiful man with the tears and snot bubbles pot uh, what do you say tears and snot bubbles sock puddles hey i low-key my hey man i don't know I, I, <laughs> that was a good elusive impersonation but yeah he was doing his thing love that verse then we go to freaking crazy man himself man uh <laughs> he came in on the verse billy woods with the uh, the flyer said grown and sexy. Uh, what he said, they, they was playing oldie, so I hit the dance floor, got sweaty. Like the way he was rapping, I was like, man, imagine freaking seeing Billy Woods in the middle of the dance floor and uh, grown and sexy night, man. Billy Woods seemed like he would scream at the DJ if that nigga played a wrong song, man. That nigga played a wrong song. I don't like this song. Like he just yelled, I don't like this song. Hey, that's not how the club works, but you can't just yell at the DJ is gonna change the song. I'm not gonna lie, Billy Woods yelled at me to change the song. I'm not gonna lie. I might might pee myself a little bit, and I'm definitely changing this. Uh, nigga, <laughs> nigga, like he might pull out a gym star razor and just buck fifty a nigga, man. That nigga's crazy, bro. Fire verse from him though. Um, then Earl came in with the uh, asymptomatic, but I get sick of the delays. South Paul under the no star, uh, forcing the lead change. The way that he. The way that he can do a verse is very interesting to me because Earl, I don't think it was this song, but another song that I'm gonna talk about. One of my favorite things he did on that Mac Miller song. What's that Mac Miller song with Mac, Kendrick, Danny? I forget the name of it. I think it was on Faces, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the way that he'll like keep a concept going on after the bar is done. So like he'll like uh, mention it like two bars later, but he still keep on going with the concept. And that's just very interesting to me. Uh, and yeah, I, I love the way he kind of just like leads off on every line of this with the asymptomatic, but I get sick of the delays. And I don't know with the miss and the E way. Like I love that about him. He could do very interesting flows. And yeah, man, love Earl, man. Fire, 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 fire song. And then we go to Alchemist's best beat on here, in my, in, in my opinion, man. The first beat was fire, but this this gets stuck in my head all the time now. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, Hey, that nigga was talking on here. What'd he say? Same one I forgot to praise, still above me. Fire intro line right there. I love that right there, man. And this is what I was talking about, how he keep on going with the concept after the... Like, he'll... He'll he'll talk about like he'll have like a bar and go into a different subject, but still have that same concept that he was talking about in that previous bar. Like he said, uh, what he said, he said, uh, one thing about it, I'm gonna beat him to the punch, stumped all all day trying to do something with his mom or something like that. And he went to a whole different topic, but he still kept the concept on about being first to the punch, being stumped out, like that type of stuff. It's just, that's really cool to me. That's just like little nerd rap stuff that I love. You know what I'm saying? Like, as I just listen to more and more rap, I like just the little small stuff about it. And just little small stuff like that, I appreciate it because it's like, man, that nigga's putting effort into bars. And if any nigga's putting effort into his bars, hey, you got my respect, my boy. And that was fire. Like I said, this beat is so freaking good. And he just floated all over it. <laughs> Then we go to Lobby, uh, Interlude. Hey, man, this is another beat, man. That very hard hit and beat. Uh, fire stuff. Little, you know what I'm saying? Just a little good, little, little, little good short interlude right here. Uh, but yeah, man, like I said, another black noise beat, if I think, I think if I'm not mistaken. And this was hitting. So it's like, I don't get why that 2010 beat was sounding like that. Dog, I love that beat, though. But just to, need to be raised up a little bit, man. Need to hit a little harder in the whip, man. But either way, good little interlude. 
Then we go to God Laughs, beautiful song, man. Um, I think Alexander Spit is his name, if I'm not mistaken, produced that. Uh, super duper good stuff, man. That you know that that. I don't know what's being sampled right there, but it's great. Uh, this sounds like some uh some rap songs type of Earl right here. He said, "My grandpa." My grandpa spoke 13 different languages and still had nothing to say. That was crazy to me. Um, That puts you into perspective. Be, his niggas barely know English and be the loudest nigga in the room, man. So, hey, I thought that was an interesting part, man. Brother knew 13 languages and still had nothing to say. Fire, fire song. Like I said, a very different type of pacing to this album in general. But this kind of changed the pace of the album. This song, like I said, it's not like it could have been on some rap songs. But very interestingly paced album. Much different from some rap songs. Much different from... um. What he put out after that? Freaking uh was Feet of Clay the next one? Uh yeah, I think Feet of Clay was the next one. Very much different pacing from those two albums compared to this. Very different sounding. Cause then after that, he raps over Titanic, which is basically like a little oozy type of beat. And the nigga was sliding on it, man. Hometown, what do you say? Hometown, homie down like a rock. So what do you say? Hometown, homie down like a rock. So you know I just gotta go skip it. Uh down in the Brooklyn. Like the way he was rapping over that, I was hoping to hear Uzi. Yeah, I just put my wrist all in the pet. Like I, I was hoping to hear that. But uh either way, uh like I said, just a different change of pace. And uh it was it was a pretty good song. Like I said, I can see people also probably uh I don't know, I'm not saying not liking this album, but the way that it's paced, I can see somebody being like, oh, it's not as cohesive as some of his previous albums or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I, hey, I love it. I, I think that this is a, a very interesting album just from a lyric standpoint, from the beat chant, from the beat standpoint. And I have learned that I cannot judge an Earl album 100% accurately until like several weeks later. So I was like, let me get this out, my initial thoughts. But this probably won't be my final opinion on this album. Um, but yeah, either way, Titanic is a good song. And then we go to, man, Fire in the Hole, bruh. That freaking beat that. Fire, man. I mean, a nigga might have to pull out the lyrics for this one, man. That brother was talking on this song, man. I love this. I feel like this is a great closer. I think that this might be his best rapping on his album up there with 2010. If it's not, this is 2010. But either way, man, Fire in a Hole, in my opinion, is a special song, man, with the when he say seeping into the moach, I needed a quick result. I read it and did respond. She see it and salt sprinkle. I needed another go. I'm seeing her when I won't. Hey, man. That nigga, was, bro, I'm talking about that nigga found a pocket on this bit right here and just started going, man. I love this, man. The piece to Kai solo to Soja. I couldn't toast a drink to demise. I heard a clink. Life could change in the blink of an eye. I'm wrinkling time. I'm going to leave it to y'all to get hoodwinked and surprised. Threw on some boozy. I'd rather be with you when I'm hot, bro. That nigga was, he really found his pocket on here. Out the dungeon like outcast, funnels with the loud pack, hunter boot crunching through the brown grass. Come, bro. The way that he found his pocket on this beat, I'm not going to lie. This made me think, dang. Now I want the next album to be firing, uh, like 10 fire in the holes. Because this beat put him in a completely different realm. Not saying the other beats didn't. I feel like this is 2010 had him just writing differently. I don't know what about these beats woke him up, but I realized that about certain rappers. Certain rappers hear certain production and it just wakes them up. Not saying he was sleep on the rest of his album, but it just they get tapped into a different zone. He was in a different zone on this in 2010 that it was just like, wow, I wonder what it was about these beats that put him into that zone because those are two very, very, very special zones that are very, very hard to get into as a rapper. So yeah, man, like I said, he displayed some very, very, very talented, just skill and writing and penmanship on here. And the beats are, a lot of them, I never heard him rap over beats like this, like a Titanic or the one that Sage produced. So, hey, man, uh, I, lo I love this album. It's a very, very good album. Um, like I said, I'm going to have to really listen to it for it to really seep in. Uh, I can't even say I really, really love it. But I am in a heavy in like with this album, if that makes any sense. Like a girl, like you don't want to say you love her, but like, well, I kind of, I kind of like baby. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm liking this a lot, and I feel like it might hit a little bit different a couple weeks from now. So, hey, 
Hopefully you guys liked it as well. Maybe you didn't, maybe you did. Let me know. And until next time I say what I mean, I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate and I, I players gonna play, man. Y'all holla at your partner, man. <laughs>